gems welcome or welcome back to another one of my videos today i am going to be showing you how i decorated diva's section of gem city if you've been following along you'll know that each villager on gem city has their own color coordinated area on the island and diva's is purple because she is a little purple frog who gets too much hate can i just say everyone hates on diva because of her sideburns but i think it is you know very fitting to her Anyway, this build took me forever to do, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So to start us off, I'm going to walk you through what I had originally done for D.Va and the vision in which I thought I was going for, which was this big open field full of lavenders, which are purple hyacinths, and then a grass path kind of winding through a dirt path to make it look a little bit more natural. But I hated it. I hated it so much, I did not like the way the grass path and the dirt path Path interacted it felt like there weren't enough lavenders so I went around and I picked up all of the fences I also didn't like the combination of fences I had we don't have enough good purple fences in this game but I picked up all the fences I dug up all the hyacinths and I wiped away all of the paths so I had a blank slate this took a while as you can imagine so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you sit through it all and poof there it is, gone. <laughs> My second idea was to kind of mimic what I had done on Egbert's produce farm, which was have a couple three by three tiles with irrigation either side of it. And that could be the little lavender farm. And then it's kind of symmetrical and it looks very cute. And I kept this idea for a long time. I did the same thing I did on Egbert's farm, put three by three tiles of the in-game dark dirt path with irrigation on either side of the squares and then just planted nine flowers in each square. Pretty self-explanatory. But here was where I ran into some issues. I couldn't figure out how wide I wanted the road to be. So if you know, if you've been following along, as I said earlier, the road in this game is five tiles wide if you want the whole thing with the lines in the middle. But sometimes I do it only four as like a little walkway up. So that was kind of the sacrifice I was having to make here. I was having to do five up to Diva's house, but only four like along the front and it was all looking just a little bit weird i'm not gonna lie i hadn't given myself enough space i should have just done diva's farm like on the same level as egbert maybe i'll change it in the future we shall see I placed Diva's house down to kind of give me an idea for the space that I had and then I started putting some fencing down and I was trying to figure out what fencing I wanted, whether I wanted the corrugated fencing and the country fencing like I did on Egbert's farm or something else. I did start off with the brown or rusted corrugated fencing but it was looking a little bit too, um, a little bit too brown. There wasn't enough like vibrancy was looking a bit dull so i do replace that in a bit with some hedge fencing which i think just looks so much nicer and so much more colorful and then i ran around for a bit and you'll see to the side that i have like two trucks and i get rid of them i do not get attached to it because i did have like a little loading bay for her but it just didn't make sense they're actually the trucks that are in my airport speed build so and then i was like okay this road is too thin i don't like it at the time it didn't make sense to have a two tile wide road leading up to where trucks are like you would need a road to have trucks on it so I then made the path wider leading up to Diva's house from the incline which meant I had to shorten the lavender farms and so instead of making them three by three spaces I made them just long, <laughs> I made them long with irrigation going on either side but again do not get attached, do not think that this is the final product because it is not, it 
most certainly isn't. Like I said, this build took me a long time and I do think it is because I hadn't given myself enough space, but you live and you learn, you know? And then I put some gyroids down on these log stools. I really wanted to do this. I just, I love adding gyroids to places. It really adds some movement and some noise as well. And I put them on their little log stools so they weren't like buried in the hyacinths. But yeah, I was really loving this concept. I thought it looked really cute. But then there was one item that I was desperate to use, the pergola. <laughs> this purple customized um, pergola, literally I couldn't not use it in this build. It is perfect, it literally has lavenders on it, but I could not figure out where to put it for the life of me. Everywhere I put it either felt awkward or blocked a view. So I dug up all of the lavenders, well, not all of them, but quite a few of them, and I filled in the irrigation uh, in the middle, and so I was left with a three by three space in the center of all of the lavenders. I think my original idea here was to put the pergola right at the edge. Yeah, like I did for Egbert's farm, but it just, again, it felt really bland. It felt lackluster. It felt empty. I did not like it. <laughs> it was such a weird space to work with, but we do get there eventually, don't you worry, but you may see my character run around in circles for a little bit, okay? So then I was like, you know what, screw it, you ain't getting no irrigation, okay? So I started filling in all of the waterscaping and this is where I thought about putting the pergola right in the center, but I had to figure out just how much space I needed for that and it turns out it was a lot. <laughs> the pergola is three by three tiles, so it's a big, big space, but I ended up deciding to put it right in the center with these custom codes in the middle to kind of give it some flavor it's a shame you can't put any items under the pergola because like a cute little chair in there would have been really nice and then i surrounded it in the purple hyacinths so that it's kind of like a chill space you know i imagine it would be quite nice to sit there and kind of smell the lavenders whilst reading a book i don't know i don't read books but i feel like someone would enjoy that <laughs> i feel like diva would enjoy that so this is for her, obviously. <laughs> and this is the final concept. This is the final layout. You know, we are getting there. This was after about um, three hours, maybe. It was a long time from like first idea to this one. It took me too long. And I did do a portion of this on stream. So I apologize to anyone who was there watching me struggle with this, but thank you for sticking it through with me. And here I am replacing the fencing with the hedge fencing. I just think it looks a lot nicer with this kind of area. It was a nightmare to do because I had to fill in the waterscaping in order to fit the hedges back. It was a whole thing. So ladies and gentle germs, if you're going to put hedges or fencing next to water escaping, please put the fencing down first, please. Think about it, okay? <laughs> And you can see that I put these little garden table and chairs just in this corner just to fill the space. There wasn't really much else I could put there that wouldn't obscure the view of the lavender. I thought it would just be a cute little resting spot for anyone who wanted to come and sit next to the lavender if they didn't want to be in the middle, you know? Maybe they would get attacked by bees or something and they're scared of bees. This means they can sit next to it and they can read a book and just chill out next to Diva lavender farm and here we are at the end of the build it is finally happening i will show you what i did at the front of it in a minute but here is the finished product i put a couple more things down like a clock and a garden wagon and i dropped some hyacinths so that it looked like you know there had been some left around everywhere but i just think it does look really nice i was actually tempted to move the whole thing to below Egbert's farm but when I was trying it out and I moved Diva's house it just wasn't looking right and I hated it so I came back I looked around and I was like you know what this is actually quite beautiful this is what I did to the front it's not great it's just a little like city walkway excuse that blank space there is supposed to be a snack machine there but I stole it for a different build but yeah I think this came out really nice in the end and I'm actually quite happy with it
So gems, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you spending a bit of your time with me whilst I ramble on about Animal Crossing. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I didn't have a lot of fun making it, but that's just how it be sometimes. I think going from one farm to another farm was a mistake and I probably should have focused on something else, but I do really like how it came out in the end after, you know, putting it down for a little while. I forgot to mention, but I actually made this build like probably a month ago it was a long time ago that i did this and i've only just worked up the energy to edit it all together and show it to you guys so yeah i hope you enjoyed it and you like how it came out remember if you like the video then like the video and consider subscribing to the channel it'd be great to have you here as part of the gem community we are building over on youtube we are dangerously close to 150 subscribers so if you want to help us get there i don't know it's up to you and remember to join us over on twitch twitch.tv slash jazzy0451 where i do a buttload of my builds you can see my brain go wee woo whilst i try and figure out what the hell i'm doing so if that sounds fun to you come join us and be sure to follow me on all other socials such as Instagram, Twitter and the lovely lovely Discord. But without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, evening, wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!